Hello and welcome to GitHub Checkout. I am Sasha Rosenbaum, a product manager at GitHub, and my guest today is Chris Patterson. Chris, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, I'm Chris Patterson. I'm a product manager uh, for GitHub Actions. Okay, so our topic today is GitHub Actions in general and some new features that we're releasing for GitHub Actions. So before we actually get started, I think maybe some of our viewers don't know what Actions are. So would you like to tell us a little bit more about Actions? Sure. So GitHub Actions is uh, at its core really a general purpose automation system for your GitHub. So we've built a workflow language that you can execute based on a series of events. And those events include everything from obviously pushing code to opening issues or opening pull requests. Those workflows can utilize these things called actions, which are built by the community, which encapsulate different functionality like uh, pushing a uh, building and pushing a Docker container or, you know, tagging pull requests based on particular changes. Um, and those can run on a set of infrastructure that we provide called hosted runners uh, at GitHub, or actually they can run on your own private runners. Um, one of the key workloads that people like to automate with GitHub Actions are their CI and those, those pull request tests and validations. Uh, so it's a great system for that. But we do like it because it, it allows people to do things beyond that. And, and I see cases from the community where they automate things like, like I said, like pull request tagging or marking issues as stale, or um, even uh, I saw a really neat use case once where somebody was automatically running regression tests on code based on code snippets and issues that were open, which was kind of neat. Interesting. So basically to reiterate the high level architecture, we have GitHub hosted runners and you can also mm -hmm. use your own, but so yep. you, we have a GitHub hosted runner and you can basically define a workflow, which is a YAML file, which defines mm -hmm. your kind of jobs and steps at high level. And then as part of these steps, you can run steps that are defined in GitHub actions, right? Mm -hmm. And these are open source and community driven. So I can write my own action for whatever I want it to do. Is that? That's great. That's a great summary. All right. And so as part of actions, I can then there's um, common actions that are shared with the community, right? There's some mm -hmm. that we've implemented ourselves. There are some that are implemented by our partners. And then mm -hmm. I can also go and implement, um, you know, trigger uh, posting my own pictures on the Internet if I wanted to with GitHub Actions. You can do pretty much anything you want to. Um, the community has in the marketplace and the kind of gallery, there's a little bit over 4,000 actions that the community wow. has built. Um, we have a, a couple of dozen that we've built, and obviously there are dozens made by different partners. But when we look across our telemetry, we see on the order of about 14,000 unique actions that are used uh, kind of on a monthly basis. And so that says that there's a lot of people out there that are building actions to use in their workflows that are just for them, which we think is also great. You know, we want to have that flexibility of you can share broadly with the community or if you have something that works just for your project, you know, that's fantastic. Yeah, this sounds amazing. And of course, it does sound like it's a really, really good um, system to be able to run your CI. Um, so I know there was a couple of features that you wanted to show us today. Uh, do you want to go into a demo and show us stuff? Absolutely. So the first uh, feature that I want to talk about a bit today is actually something we released quite a while ago, but I still get questions about it all the time. And that is the sort of simplest possible action, which is, you know what, I've got this workflow that I want to run, and I really just want a button that says run workflow. And so as you can see back in July here, we introduced this thing we call workflow dispatch. And it's just a really basic type of event that gives you a button and the ability to have some inputs. So I'm going to actually just take and copy the example here and go set up a new walk through setting up a new workflow using this workflow dispatch event and show you how it works. Sounds good. All right. So I've got my repo here and I'm going to go and click on the actions tab. And I get a couple of different options here of a bunch of different pre-made workflows that I can choose from. Uh, we have a bunch from our various cloud partners as well as a lot of different things for automating continuous integration as well as other types of things. In fact, there's one right here for a manual workflow. So I'm actually just going to go set up this workflow. And we see that we've got uh, the basic structure of our actions YAML file here. So I've got a name for it. Uh, the on section defines what event 
this workflow is going to run on. And you can actually have a workflow trigger off multiple different events. In this case, we're going to run off workflow dispatch. And I've got one input, which is a name, get a description, the default. Um, and then I've got a, one job that's going to simply echo out whatever value it is I put in there. So if I go ahead and commit this to my main branch, and then click on the Actions tab, I see I have this new entry for my manual workflow. If I click on that, I get this Run Workflow button. So I'm going to say, Hi, it's a Sasha. Run this workflow. Nice. And then we should get a new run here for our manual workflow. So we can see this trigger. This is running on our GitHub Actions, our hosted runners. And this is, you can see the greet job running here. It's starting the workflow. So it'll take a minute or so to um, pick up. We see this one ran pretty quick. Hello, Sasha, uh, echoed out right there. All it's right. a super simple feature, but it has just come up on a, a regular basis. Everybody says, look, I just need that manual button to run a workflow and the ability to have some inputs. Uh, it's just super helpful. So basically, whenever I want to enable manual triggers for my actions, I just add that um, dispatch, workflow yep. dispatch, and it allows me to have that manual run action button. Yes. Yep. You just right. add that workflow dispatch event and, uh, and off you go. Um, like I said, there's a bunch of different kinds of events that you can trigger actions on. And so this is one we showed you. The other really common one is uh, pull request. You know, we have lots and lots of open source repos that are making heavy use of the of pull request to allow people to contribute changes and bug fixes to these projects. And they run their actions workflows and make sure that those changes don't introduce any breaking functionality. They run their tests, they run their CI. One of the things that we heard pretty quickly as we released actions from customers was, you know, that repo to fork and pull request model uh, is, is great in the open source community, loves it, but there's also enterprises and other organizations that really want to use the same model. Um, and when we initially released actions, we didn't offer the ability to trigger pull request workflows from forks of private repos. And we I didn't see. do this. Yeah. So basically Sorry. inside an enterprise, I would have to branch, right? Create feature branches and then merge them. Um, and it's out um, on public repositories. I could use the open source model of forking things out. Yes, that's right, exactly right. And uh, while that works great, the branch model works, works very well. There's enterprises that simply want to work in that fork and pull model. So when we originally released Actions, we decided not to implement that. And the reason is, is by forking that repo and running Actions, you kind of uh, give the enterprise a little bit less control over what's happening. Um, and so they need the ability to, to lock down and say, yes, we can do this or no, we can't do that. And so to fix this, we decided to implement some new settings for enterprises to turn these features on and off. And so back in August, we released some new settings for private repository forks. And if you go into your organization settings or your enterprise settings, you'll see these new settings where you can say, I want to be able to run workflows on fork pull requests. This only applies to private repos. And also the ability to send write tokens to those workflows, as well as send secrets to those workflows. And this is significant because in the case of public repos, we never send a writable token or secrets to fork pull requests. This is because you have code coming from an unknown person and we want to limit the potential uh, for them to steal information and, and access things they shouldn't have access to. Makes but sense. in enterprises, and organizations, if for customers that want to work in the fork and pull model, they really want it to work in the exact same way it would if I ha were able to commit directly to the repo and create a branch. And so these settings allow them to configure that. So you basically now have full control over enabling and disabling these features so you can choose the way that you want your enterprise to work around these things. Exactly. 
So if I go look at this enterprise or this organization I have set up and I go look at the settings for this particular repo, right now, and I look under actions, I've said that this one does not let me run fork pull requests. And so let's do a quick test here. So if I go to my fork, so I've got a fork of that particular repo, I'm going to go to the readme file, just edit this guy real quick. Take out some content, create a new branch, call it patch one, propose these changes. And in this case, I'm actually going to go click here and say, you know, I want to compare and pull request. I'm going to add to our base repository here, this branch. Um, head base, I actually want the base to be master in this case create my pull request and we can see what's going to happen is is now we're back in fib tools but no workflows are running uh, if we go look at actions there hasn't been anything triggered so I've got no no workflow happening so what I'm going to do is go into my settings go to actions and say you know what I want to be able to run and go ahead and set these settings we'll save that so let's go ahead and make a change to this file and open up a pull request. And we should see, now that we have those settings set, our pull request run. So we'll test more. We will create a new branch, call it patch three, propose these changes. Now, in this case, it's going to ask me to merge directly up to master. But what I want to do is go and open up a pull request back up to the base repo. So we're going to go back up to Fib Tools here. Um, with our patch, create this pull request. In which case, we've created the pull request in the upstream repo, and we should see a run trigger. So now we've seen a run trigger to update the readme. So in the last time we updated it, there was no run trigger. In this case, we see my updated patch two, and we're triggered a run of all these different uh, jobs that are going to validate that I didn't break anything and then eventually let me merge. Which, by so, the way, I have to mention that this is an awesome feature that you can run on a matrix and choose all different OS to basically run your CI build on and make sure that it's all working. Yeah, it's another great feature. It's been there since day one. It gives you a lot of flexibility and the ability to really test. In this case, across all, I'm testing across three different operating systems and three different versions of Node. Which I know some folks who are absolutely in love with this just for this feature because they don't have to have like a Mac under their desk now to test these things. So that's kind of fantastic um, advantage for enterprises. All right, so um, thank you for showing us these features. Um, so one more thing that I wanted to ask you about. So I know that GitHub Actions uh, allows uh, open source projects to run some basically hosted runners for free. So do you want to tell us about that too? Sure. Uh, so GitHub Actions offers the free usage of Actions to open source projects, and it's effectively unlimited. We do have some uh, terms of service that allow for fair use. We really expect you guys to be using this to run your CI and run your test and do things that are really about maintaining your repos. Um, we also actually offer some amount of free or included uh, runtime on our hosted runners for your private repos. And depending on if you have team or enterprise, you, you get a different amount. And you can go check out the documentation for those details. And I think that we just recently added um the feature that you must enable actions to actually run on open source projects too? So that, not exactly. So what we did is, in the case, uh, we just talked about the fork workflow as an interesting example. So there's a lot of cases that we saw where customers would fork some project into their, their, or their uh, account. And then they would maybe play with it a little bit and then kind of let it languish. And in many of these cases, these projects had scheduled workflows. And so we would start to see thousands and thousands of just scheduled workflows running that are really doing nothing because these are repos that are just not active. And so we have explicitly uh, ha added a setting that basically if you fork a project, you have to enable scheduled workflows explicitly. And this is really to protect the community. 
you know, compute resources are finite. They're definitely not infinite. And we want to make sure that we can provide the best service we can to the open source community. And so we're doing small changes like this to really keep things uh, in what we call fair use. And, and we know in this case that most people aren't trying to abuse it. They just didn't know, right? It was an accident. And so we want to make sure that uh, it's not, it's less likely that somebody does something unintentional that, that hurts the community. I see. Yeah, there's nothing more permanent than temporary things, right? Exactly. <laughs> the test lives on forever. Um, so thank you so much for leading the charge on building uh, the actions features. And thank you so much for spending time with me today, um, telling us about um, how all this works. So this has been GitHub Checkout. And please hit the subscribe button for more similar videos. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Sasha.